not the soundbite you just heard of we're back, meaning Sam Ellinger, Texas, but in the state of Texas, it's Texas A&M. They've had a couple of big-time players hit the portal over the last 72 hours, one being Walter Nolan, LT Overton, Jack, uh, Jake Johnson, Raymond Contrell, who might be going to receiver, might be going to Kentucky. Max Johnson is going to be the new quarterback and North Carolina offensive lineman Chase Besantis, who started at right tackle. Fidel Diggs, and some people believe that Evan Stewart, the wide receiver, will also be entering the portal right here. Uh, Joe, I, I got to be real. Is it bad? Yes, but it's not anything unlike that we have not seen at other schools, LSU, Oklahoma, USC. When the transfer portal opened and these big coaching changes have happened, We've seen players go into the portal, and I think this is just another rendition of A&M. It's going on with them. But the funny thing is, in all of this, it, we're coming full circle in when A&M and Jimbo went out there with NIL and paid for all those players to come to Texas A&M. And now, majority of that recruiting class is now hitting the portal to finish their last year somewhere else. If you want to talk about poetic justice, because remember, during the entire offseason, and really recruiting period, all we could talk about was A&M and then Saban taking shots at Jimbo, Saban taking shots at Dion. because remember Travis Hunter, the number one prospect in the country at the time, and everybody knows who he is now, uh, picks Jackson State. And now we're starting to come a little full circle here, right? Mm. I, I, if I'm an A&M fan, am I, am I a little, like, upset, whatever, maybe – but I'm not freaking out because we've seen other programs this happen to. We saw Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley have two really good seasons in year one. And then now you're seeing what's going on at Oklahoma with Brent Venables as they get their 10-win season. They're back on track. It feels like right now, and this tends to happen whenever there is one of these mass exodus incidents in college football, There's so it always feels like the since the transfer portal became a thing, there's always one school that it's like, Oh my God, look at all these guys that are leaving. And right now we're doing the same stupid bit. Everybody on Twitter is like, oh my God, what's going on at Texas A&M? And everybody is trying to pile on and clown on them and talk about how there's all these issues and, oh, Mike Elko can't keep the locker room together. I don't think any of that's a problem. I don't think any of this is an issue. I think it's an expectation. A guy that recruited you, I understand that a lot of people would love to say that the financial aspect of it was why these guys were sticking around. I'm sure some of them it was, but a lot of these guys came to play for Jimbo Fisher. Mike Elko comes in. There's probably a decent amount that had no relation or conversation with Mike Elko before he came in and they want to go play elsewhere. I also don't blame a lot of these younger guys who are one year away from entering the NFL draft to want to go join an already established position group that's already at an elite level. To see somebody like Walter Nolan end up at Tennessee or Georgia or Alabama to join a group of other top 100 draft picks to boost mm -hmm. his draft stock to compete for a national championship. Texas A&M is going to take a year or two before they get to their full capability, no matter what. I don't blame <laughs> them for not wanting to sit around for that. The only thing I will say that maybe draws some concern, Blake, you haven't heard a lot of the top portal kids brought up for Texas A&M. You know, you don't really see that their name out there a lot with a lot right. of the guys that have entered the portal. So guys, well, he, doesn't even that a, he doesn't even have a staff yet. So he can't, he can't right. really go out there and recruit like you're talking about, which is kind of crazy. Right. What I was just getting at though, to finalize my thought here, everybody leaving is one thing, but can he bring in a good crop of guys to mitigate that damage? So, can he? Yes. And look, here's another thing. The biggest thing, I think, for him, and and Connor Weigman could go into the portal. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he isn't. But he's not going to have the weapons that he would need to succeed there. Okay? So, is Evan Stewart coming back? Are they going to pay him to stay? Like, the Moss kid, the the Reuben Owens, you know, maybe they'll keep some some things around him. Maybe they'll keep some of those offensive linemen. But look, you just got to hire your staff, be calm, don't overreact. And and look, the AD, Ross Bjork, is going to have to help him out with things. He's going to have to get to players that are going into the portal 
And he's going to have to say, look, we, we will do what we got to do. We did it before. We'll do it again. And, and you saw Evan Stewart say, look, I never got paid from A&M. That's, that's horseshit, okay? Because I know for a fact that anybody at A&M that wants to come at me, please come on the show because we'll debate it. You were handing out – or A&M was handing out con, NIL contracts. Some people believe in, in the range of fifty to $75,000 a, a, a semester. Okay, so don't act like you weren't paying people. You're going to have to pay people now. I'm not going to overreact to it, Joe. I, I I just refuse to because, look, w- 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 there's a long way to go to this. We got 28 more days until it closes, and then you got spring, right? People can go in the portal in spring, and they can do some things. So I'm not going to overreact there. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, their defense, when Elijah Robinson left, I think Elijah Robinson leaving is a big deal. You see all those D linemen get in the portal. Should have kept him. Make him your DC. You know, like, but he refused. He refused to. He goes on to Syracuse. Elijah goes on to Syracuse, and it was what it was. Have they hired a defensive coordinator? Not yet. They, huh? Just Colin okay. Klein to my at least, at least maybe I missed it. Uh, but I don't no, think I don't think they have. That 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 actually I agree here. Again, there's there's things to not be worried about, and then there are things to be worried about. Not retaining him and making your him your defensive coordinator, I think, was absolutely a mistake. He is right. identified often as an up and coming coach. I don't know off the top of my head if they crossed <clears throat> paths when Elko was there previously, but yeah, they, they I mean, he was Elko's D line coach, so it's not I, like I, he didn't know him. That's a really bad. That's a big mistake. Big that's mistake. a big mistake. Very, very big mistake because I would would have been willing to bet that maybe not all of these guys would have stuck around, but at least half of them would. What, didn't they make him the interim coach with the intention of of him being a reason that guys would stick around and, and finish the season? Yes, Wasn't that, that why? That is correct. I don't like that Elko did that. That's a mistake. That was a huge mistake. Well, I, I mean... <laughs> It is and it isn't to some degree in the sense of that you got to bring in your own staff. And if you don't want Elijah, you don't want Elijah. And look, Mike Elko is going to call plays on defense. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code BELIEVE50. Bet Online has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, Live in-game betting, no matter what, your football betting needs are met at Bet Online. And again, make sure you use that promo code Believe50 B-L-E-A-V 50 to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. 